everyone, we're on the ferry to Vancouver Island to meet up with Adrian O'Connor of Real Obsession Sport Fishing. It's another Northwest Fishing Reports adventure, so let's, let's go, go fishing. fishing! It's time for the Northwest Fishing Reports with Aaron Borg, Mike Carey, and Rob Holman. Come along as we travel to hidden gems and fishing hotspots around the Northwest. You'll see a little of everything as we fish with top guides on their home waters and bring you the latest in tackle, tactics, and techniques to help you catch more fish. Today, the guys troll for lingcod and bottom fish off Vancouver Island with Adrian O'Connor of Real Obsessions. And then Mike Carey has some Ooh. Banks Lake Walleye 101 with Keith Jensen of Big yeah. Wally's Guide Service. Now, it's time to go fishing. Presented by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. Rob Holman here with Northwest Fishing Reports. I'm a little unsteady, hang in here with me. We're fishing off Vancouver Island with Adrian O'Connor, a real obsession. And we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, what we're using here. We're gonna start trolling for lingcod. But first, we've really had a fun time figuring out these single action reels. And Adrian, you're saying this is a West Coast BC thing. This is what you guys use. Definitely, yeah, these uh, I believe were created down in Victoria. These ones here are made by Islander Reels. They are made in Victoria. The original reels were actually made of wood, had a wing nut drag on them. You can imagine what they were like to use yeah. with a big salmon pulling on the end of them, right? Correct. So yeah, we're using 10 and a half foot mooching rods, uh, arc type rods made by the same company as the Qualia Halibut reels we were using there yesterday. Right. We're gonna troll with uh, Flasher and these uh, squid imitations, they're actually called turds. Uh, right on the bottom, we're gonna get that cannonball down to the bottom, bring it up a couple feet, uh, gonna get some lingcod, some different species of rockfish, always a chance at a halibut, and even some salmon. So uh, you never know what you're gonna bring up when we're doing this style of fishing. Yeah, well this this guy that makes these, he's a buddy of yours, somebody you've done some? Yeah, you Keith Robert, from? Keith Robertson makes these rods. Yeah, okay. we're on his uh, pro staff team. So cool. he gives us all kinds of new stuff to test out. Uh, we got a couple rods up front there that uh, we're gonna try to beat up and uh, they're gonna come out on the market next year. We're gonna give them a little feedback on them. All right, yeah. very good, a little product development going on as well here gotcha. uh, so the, so it sure adds a sporting element if you're not used to it on those salmon I know Mike was holding on for his life for a second there because it's a little different dragon in the return you're on it it sure is fun using these it is definitely sporting um, you know you only got a one-to-one -one ratio on that pickup you know, salmon can swim faster than we we can reel. We saw that this morning. Yeah. Um, so you know, you just gotta go like crazy, get your hand away when they're going the other way, and uh, keep that rod up, keep that line tight. It's gonna be another epic day. Hey Adrian, what's the inlet we're traveling? This is Esperanza Inlet on the northwest side of Vancouver Island. A little pull, trolling for bottom fish. Single action knuckle buster. We start out at uh, what, 150 you said, Adrian? Yeah, we're about 140 feet, yeah. 140, trolling off the bottom. Oh, he might be, he might be deeper. Hey, hey, hey. Start laying. Yeah. Very cool. On the troll. the top of a reef we've got our cannonball right down within a couple feet of the bottom we're checking every few minutes to make sure it's there if we haven't had a bite so that we're in that strike zone there you go. Yeah. <laughs> 
Another yellow eye. Really? That one was hungry, swallowed it. And we're dancing. That's the It's the fish band. Right side for million. Left side, quillback. Quillback. This is a quillback. The little guy, and he's gonna go back. Another set of doubles here, trolling for bottom fish. It's been pretty much non-stop action all morning for these fish. Mine's not so little. It's a nice fish. Adrian, we've got our limit. We could keep fishing for lingcod, but we're catching a lot of these guys, so you're moving us, right? Yeah, we're gonna go move over to a different rock pile. Hopefully not get any more of these. See if we can't get a couple more lings to get our limit of those two. Um, yeah, they're not released. They don't release very well. Their swim bladder comes up, they get their gas, and uh, basically we're feeding the eagles. So we wanna keep these fish and get them for somebody else, let them spawn. You know, just keep the resource going, right? So we've got what we need for the day, so. Absolutely, good, uh, good stewardship of the resource. Let's get back into the action. Rob, back on you, buddy. Put a great dinner. We're fishing a flat goal. Adrian's put us on trying after we switched over from the bottom fish, target the wings a little more, get us some, some size. Yeah, it's yeah, we got it. a couple and we got one biting over there right now right on the right other right. side. Perfect. I mean it's interesting, we moved and now we're getting just wings. Yeah. So before we were getting the It's uh, almost the like pavilion. he landed that way. <laughs> well maybe we're bringing both the gear up, maybe we'll run back up and come back down with the wind on that back there again. Seemed to work that time. Yeah. Nice. Nice fish. Woo. Keep her leg. Rolling for Lincoln. Pretty cool technique. Thanks for showing us it, Adrian. Yeah, you're welcome. Yep, good job, Aaron. Good job, Aaron. Good. Get into that set. Attaway, Aaron. Nice. Making another pass. Biggest yeah. halibut of your life yesterday and biggest ling cod today? Yep. There we go, for sure. Not too bad. Personal best. That white hoochie we've been trolling all day. Still doing its thing. 
This is some fun fishing, man. There's another like thing, yeah. We found them. Adrian put us on the wings here. <laughs> Five minutes in between them, maybe. Not even, eh? Right on. Right. We haven't even had time to get the other guy in the box yet. No. Another nice fish. We got the wind and the rain coming at us. But the fight is turned on. Oh, yeah. Definitely a West Coast day out here today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Take it all day with these fish fighting this way, though. Yeah. Bring your rain gear. Oh, another great eater. Oh, Rob's got a nice one on there. Keep it under the water. See a little run if you want to run. Just gonna back up. Took that herring all over the was it the herring man? Yeah, that one took the herring. Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wow. I don't know guys. What else can we say? You gotta come out here and fish with real obsessions. They're gonna get you on some great fishing. The uh, salmon and, and the uh, halibut yesterday and today, bottom fish and lingcot. And, and a nice salmon to start it off. I you mean, betcha. thank you. Yeah. Just keep so going. Much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're pretty lucky. We got such a diverse fishery around here. We've got an inshore salmon fishery that's great. We got halibut, bottom fish, ling cod, all kinds of different areas we can get at them. And then we got our offshore salmon fishery too. So we got calm water fishing and open water fishing. We're pretty blessed. Right, so it's like in our backyard. We do have direct flights from Seattle, two and a half hours from uh, Lake Washington right to our dock. There oh wow, go. there you go. Next time, we're taking a flight. <laughs> <laughs> Some of our members got the opportunity to come up and fish with Real Obsession while we're here. This is Captain Troy, one of the other boats that Real Obsession runs out of here. And this is one of our members. Tracy pulled this one in. Yep. Tracy. Yeah. And Tracy, you're out of North Idaho, is that right? Yep, that's in the Coeur d'Alene area. Some nice link cuts. Oh, wow. Check yeah. out that. <laughs> yeah. oh, we threw back some. Oh, my gosh. So I just pull these over that's here, right, to the table, and we. I'm kidding. Don't look at me like that. Go get your own fish. My fish anywhere. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so the first two Chinook I pulled in two days ago. You know, I'm used to the coconut and ponderay, so I'm used to, you know, foot-long fish. So I pulled in the salmon, I'm like, wow, this is great, and they let it go. And I was really upset. It's like, why did you let that nice fish go? Well, then we started pulling in these, and now I understand. Good day. Very, good trip. Oh, great trip. Yeah, awesome. This is a good, um, good outfit. Adrian really runs a good outfit here. What I like about it, too, is it's not just a guy's resort, because everybody's been really courteous to my being a girl fisherwoman, or that we came as a couple, or I know some of the outfitter camps I've heard of are more toward, you know, men, not really, you know, that excited about women showing up, but no, right. these guys were awesome. Yeah. More Northwest Fishing Reports after the break. fishing with uh, Keith Jensen of Big Wally's Guide Service and if you know anything about Banks Lake you know Big Wally's has fished this lake for many many years so Keith you guys are the pros so what are we going after today well we're gonna target walleye I mean you know certainly that's the big popular fish here that's what everybody wants to come here and catch we're gonna go for walleye you know right right now the walleye are kind of scattered all throughout the lake you got some deep you got some shallow one thing that we'll find right away today is the lake is full of small undersized walleye. You know, they got to be 16 inches here to keep. 
Right. Um, you just got to keep, you know, running and gunning and hitting spots and weeding through those small ones to get some, you know, those keeper fish. One thing about walleye, they are really mobile, you know, mobile, especially here on Banks Lake. You may find them in a spot one day and the next day they're a mile away. All right. Well, let's go search them out. Sounds good. Okay. What we're going to be running today is for walleye are these Max products. This one's a, a double whammy walleye pro. This one's a, a double whammy walleye pro. And it's just got the two, it's basically it's similar to a wedding ring, but it just has the, set, the, the second hook, the stinger hook in the back for these night crawlers. Um, and this, it's got the smile blade. Um, some of the other baits that we'll use will be Max products also, but they'll have the smile blade with the slow death hook combo, and that one's been very good this year as well. You know, greens, purples, blues, th these walleye in here feeding on perch, so the greens lately have been really good. Then as far as weight system goes, this is a bottom bouncer, and this one's with the arm. Some come just with the with just the, the single bar here. This one's with the with the arm. I like the, like it with the arm because you know you just have the swivel swivel there for your leader. But and this this weight they come in a lot of sizes. Uh, this is the smallest size, half ounce. They go clear up to three four ounces. Um, they're very good. They're pretty. They're you'll still you'll get snagged occasionally in the rocks, but they're very good about just ticking along the bottom. And that's what you, that's why they're called a bottom bouncer. Do you just want these things to be bouncing and ticking the bottom as you're trolling? With the, with the walleye bite, you know, one of the big things about walleye, one of the, maybe the, one of the frustrating parts is, is knowing when to set the hook. And you can really tell a difference between a small walleye bite and a, and a keeper size walleye bite. Those smaller walleye, you know, it's almost like a perch bite. It's just real fast, real fa a real fast bite. Whereas a keeper walleye, a bigger fish, you, you may see an initial tick and then the rod just loads, it's just heavy. It's almost like you're all of a sudden pulling a limb through the water. And what I like to do in that case, instead of just grabbing the rod out of the rod holder is crank down first, get them real tight, and then go ahead and lift it out. That way you're not creating a bunch of slack. Another guy, huh, Aaron? Yep. So far, we're getting a lot of the littler guys. But waiting for that big fish. We've moved from the north end of the lake, which has really that uh, spectacular high bluffs and rocky scenery, and now we're at the south end, so very different. Very different, yeah. Now we're you know we're down at South End towards Cooley City End, yeah. Not you know more of a more flat. You got a lot of you know the land on shore is very flat, and you don't have those those rocky bluffs down you know quite here at this end. But the but the lake is a different story down here. It's got a lot of structure up and down, a lot of rock down here. Um, yeah, it's like almost two different lakes. North End, you know, you got a lot of largemouth, a lot of weed, a lot of weed growth up there in tules and reeds. Whereas in the South End, it's pretty much a, a rock show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you wouldn't have to run all the way from the north end down here. There's a boat launch over there, isn't there? Exactly. Yeah, there's a coolie seat. There's a boat launch right here real close. Um, the one thing about it, you know, and this is a summer pr pattern with the wind here, in the morning, this south end of Banks Lake, it's always blowing, and it's blowing usually pretty strong until, I mean, now it's about, you know, quarter to nine maybe. Usually around between eight and nine, it'll flatten out just like this every morning. So a lot of people get, you know, um, get afraid of that wind, and they think, oh, it's going to be windy on Banks. It's, it's windy down here every, every morning in the summer, but like yeah. I said, it'll flatten right out. Fish on. Getting there. Keith, there's a lot of wrong ways to put a worm on a wedding ring. Show us the right way. 
Yeah, so with this, with this two hook setup, what I like to do is take that leading, that front hook, nose hook the crawler as close to the nose as you can, and just, and just thread it on there a little bit. Um, nothing fancy there. And I'll take that trailing one. You can't really, you can leave it dangling. The problem is this hook won't, won't run right alongside the night crawl. It tends to want to go out to the side, so you'll, you'll miss a lot of fish doing that. So I'll just take it and put that, that hook through about the middle, you know, maybe just past the middle of the crawler, just like that. I want that crawler to be pretty straight still as it's going through the water. There's a little bit of a bend to it. That's good. That gives it a little more action, a little more twist and spin in the water as well. More hot action after this word from our sponsors. Northwest Fishing Reports. Like us on Facebook to keep up with the action. There we go. Got the net out, huh? Yep. Fish on. Maybe, maybe, huh? So Mark just took into a keeper on his boat. And uh, this one's feeling better. This could be a keeper here too. Gonna to be no, close. No. Ah, no. uh, he's starting to feed her out. Not, not quite. Yeah, the sunlight makes them shrink. When they get to the top of the surface, <laughs> yeah. you just, uh, yeah, they're, they're just smaller once you get them out of the water. <laughs> That's right, shrinkage. <laughs> it's all about the shrinkage. Check out that fish over there that works. Well, when the, the walleyes are not cooperating. Switch gears to smallmouth. Yeah. Smallmouth are in here shallow right now, spawn, and this one just came off of a off of a bed. It's a pretty good fish. That was a nice fish. You know, with these switches, you know, the, the back reel switch on these spinning reels, when he's really pulling, I'll reel backwards. I just hit that switch and reel backwards. Oh yeah. You know, with when you let she like that, that was a good run. I just let him let him go and I you eliminate a lot of your line twists on these spinning reels. Spinning reels, you know, you get a lot of line twist, and a lot of it's from letting the drag go. Sure. It's the Net Cam, brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. And that bait is the, what's it, Jigmeister? Is that really? Jigmeister. Jigmeister, it, huh? It's his, it's Very his, cool. it's his Helgamite. And I had him make 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 me some in white, for mm -hmm. for just this purpose. Right. That white bait there, and what that does, I mean, it, it it helps me that white. I can see the bait when I'm doing this sight fishing like this, you know, and I'm looking at the fish. I can see the bait. Yeah. And see how the fish is reacting to the bait. Sometimes that doesn't matter. Like these these fish, right now they're just they're chomping it. But a lot of times that white really helps helps me just see what's going on. Yep. Fish on. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Marking more fish right there. This is what you are like. out here for all day. In a well-known spot on Banks, Poplar Point. Poplar Point, well-known walleye spot. Um, big, long, tapering point here. Lots of walleye have been caught here over the years. Special thanks to the guides who made nice. today's show possible. Well, that is keeper, 16 inches, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That's probably 17-ish. Walleye fishing on Banks Lake, it has its hazards. Got to watch those hooks. But there you go, another nice walleye. Yeah. And I did outfish the guys. <laughs> I did a couple times. And you're humble. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> NorthwestFishingReports.com is the Northwest's largest fishing reports website, featuring well over 50,000 fishing reports, videos, articles, and more, all 100% free.